And a good tip for you guys is actually to cover your screen. So I'm gonna grab a code right here. I'm gonna cover my screen so that I can't see it. What's up guys, it's DJ Rick Webb and we're back with episode two of How to Mix for Beginners. In this video, we're we'll be covering beat matching. Again, I'd like to give a big shout out to my friends over at Hercules for sponsoring this video tutorial series. Hercules, if you guys didn't know, like I said in my last episode, uh, Hercules is what I started out. I started out on a controller like this. Main reasons are because they're budget friendly, they're very affordable for a beginner DJ, and they got all the functionality that you need to learn basically how to do basic mixing as a DJ. And with that said guys, in front of me we got the Hercules DJ Controller Impulse 300, which we are using for this whole entire video series. Today we're talking about beat matching, so there's some crucial things on the controller here that we're going to be using for beat matching. The main things on the controller here and on any DJ controller that you're going to be using for beat matching are our tempo slash pitch faders right here for deck one and deck two and our jog wheel. Specifically, more or less, we're going to be using the outside of the jog wheel so we can bump the track back and forth. Now, before we actually get into beat matching two songs, we're going to want to do a little bit of setup here. So, first thing is you're going to want a pair of headphones. Main reason is you want to be able to listen to the song you're going to want to mix into. Now the next thing we want to do is actually on the controller, we want to take our tempo slash pitch faders and put them back to nominal or 0% change on the pitch fader. Now on the Hercules DJ Impulse 300, uh, it's actually indicated by a green light. So once you get it back to nominal or 0%, you get a green light and you're all set and ready to go. On other controllers, it might be notched. Uh, your mileage may vary. So now let's actually jump into beat matching two songs and I wanted to be very simple on this demonstration and not get too complicated. So for that we're going to use actual tracks that are already in DJU software. It comes with the software so that if you guys get this controller you can practice this as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the DJ Juice, we're going to go to song library and we're going to go to demo songs and we're going to load up house loop one and house loop two. So now the first step in beat matching two songs starts with our BPM or beats per minute. I talked a lot about beats, bars, and phrases in the first episode so if you need to catch up on the terminology and what it means and how to count music and all that please feel free to go check out the first episode. So now with house loop one and house loop two loaded up on the decks we're going to beat match these two songs. The first step in beat matching is to make sure your BPM is aligned. And by that, I mean that your BPM is the same. The software automatically calculates the BPM of every song that you have and displays it on the screen here. So you can see 120 on house loop one and 124 on house loop two. Now this is an estimate. It's not 100% exact. It's pretty dang close though most of the time. But just know for future reference when you get into more complicated songs, it might not be exact, it might not be on point, and you will have to adjust it manually by ear, which is what we're going to be learning. But just starting off as a beginner, these two songs are actually pretty much dead on when it comes to the software, which means we're going to be able to take advantage of the beat align features in this controller, which I will show you guys as I'm doing this demonstration as well. So in a normal DJ situation, we already have a song playing, so I'm going to go ahead and play House Loop 1 and let it play. So with House Loop 1 playing, we're now going to want to match House Loop 2 to the same BPM. Now we can look at the software and see that this one's 120 and this one's 124, and we can just manually adjust it up until it's that point. Now instead of looking at your laptop, you can actually look at the DJ Impulse controller and you can see that there is a red arrow on the tempo fader over here telling us to push this up. And as you push it up, you will eventually see the bottom one turn on right there and then it'll turn off, letting you know that they are on the same BPM. So now that we have the same BPM, I'm actually going to pause House Loop 1 real quick. Uh, we can actually drop in House Loop 2. Specifically where we're going to drop House Loop 2 in, for this demo we're just going to drop it in on the first beat of any bar. Mainly because we're just using House Loops. These are just audio loops, they're the same beat repetitively. 
uh, in the next video, we're going to talk about dropping in on the one, and we're going to talk more specifically with using actual songs, with intro and outro edits, and how we're going to drop it in on the one. But for this video, I want you guys just to focus on dropping it in on the first beat of any bar. Now, physically, how we're going to drop it in, we're going to go onto deck two here. We're going to grab the jog wheel, and right here is our first beat. We have that set. Keep a hold of the jog wheel and press the play button. The main reason behind that is so that when you let go of the platter, the song starts. So we're going to back it up. So now just sit there and practice going back and forth and pay attention to the arrow indicator here on the jaw wheel that will show you where your beat's at. That way when you drop it in, you know the let go right there. Right there is our beat, right there. That's the beginning of our beat, so we know to drop it in right about in there. Okay? Again, this is all in your headphones before you even start mixing. So now we're going to start house loop one on deck one. And it is up to your preference how you want to do this. Uh, I have a monitor speaker here. You can either listen to your monitor speaker for your main audio. Or I always grew up actually listening with my headphones. So I click master so that way I can actually hear the master track that's playing in my headphones as well as my cue track. So again, we're just going to go back and forth over here, noting where it's at on our jaw wheel and also just kind of referencing it. So we know that's where we're going to drop it in at. And when we get to a first of any of these bars, we're just going to drop it in. And as you can see there, I'm a little bit off beat. So right here on the beat align system, it's actually telling you to nudge the jaw wheel forward. And I'm actually really far off. And as you can see, when it is in line, the lights go away. But it's actually not perfect. And what I'm doing here is I'm listening to the song. I'm listening for the beats to make sure they sound on line. And the main thing I'm listening to is that second and fourth sharp note. And actually, a way to check that even better is to cut your low a little bit. And you can actually listen to it closer. And listen for those sharp sounds that they're on line. So what I was saying there referred to the first episode when we talked about how the first beat is normally a kick and also your third is a kick. But your second and your fourth are normally a sharper snare sound or a clap sound, something sharper. And it's easier for you to actually line up a song based on those sharp notes. So you really want to listen to to make sure that those sharp notes hit and are aligned when you're beat matching. So now let's jump in and do it again. I want to show you guys some other things that can help you learn. So let's get House Loop 1 playing over here again. Let's get to the first beat on House Loop 2. Press our play button so that way when we release it, it's all set and ready to go. And let's drop it in on any of these bars. And we're a little bit off, so we're gonna beat batch it in. I cheat a few times and I glance over and a good tip for you guys is actually to cover your screen so I'm gonna grab a coat right here I'm gonna cover my screen so that I can't see it and this is actually a good strategy for you to actually train your ear so another thing you can do if you're getting pretty good at dropping it in is actually to let a song play and kick it forward a little bit or something like that and then now you know to move it back and just move it back until your ear you can hear that those snares, those high pitch sounds are live and the song sounds good. So again, I can kick it forward, reverse it back, and go the other way. Now all I'm doing guys is just basically what the lights are indicating right there. I'm going back and forth, I'm pushing the song forward, I'm pushing the song backwards to align the two decks and you guys can see that on the software as well. We're trying to get those beats aligned. Mainly focusing on that second and fourth sharper sound. Now this will take time and practice for you to basically learn how to do it. You're basically training your ear and the lights are a good way to help you train your ear at first. But eventually you're going to want to get to the point where you can shut off the beat align system and 
practice doing it without the beat line system. Now obviously when you go out and DJ, heck yeah, use all the advantages you possibly can get. Look at the screen occasionally if you have to, but you're trying to basically get to the point where you can do it naturally and you don't need the assistance of the extra technology. And actually on the Hercules DJ Impulse Controller 300, you can actually shut off the beat line system right here. It's just this middle button. You can shut it off and then you can practice mixing in the two songs without the lights. And that right there is a simple tutorial guys on how to beat match. A very beginner based simple tutorial. For you beginner DJs that are watching this video, take time and practice what I just demonstrated right there. Practice on using your pitch fader to get your two BPMs aligned. Practice on basically dropping in the song on the first of any bar. We'll worry about which bar you want to drop it in at in the next video and dropping on the one. But for just the basics of this video, practice on dropping in the beat on the first beat of any bar. It'll be most easy if you guys get some house loops like this to practice with. Preferably around the 120 to 128 range is normally the easiest to work with. And then like I was showing you guys there at the end, kick the song that you're mixing in, push it forward a little bit, push it back a little bit, and then work your way to realign it basically. Listen for those sharp snare sounds, those clap sounds. Listen for them and try to identify which ones are the song that you're playing and which ones are the song that you're mixing in. And then determine if the song that you're mixing in, if those snare sounds are before or after the first song that's playing. That way you know to either push the jaw wheel forward to catch it up or to push the jaw wheel back to slow it down. In training your ear, I do want to note guys that if you do pick up this Hercules DJ Controller Impulse 300 right here with the software, um, the whole beat align feature makes learning a thousand times easier. It's something I really wish I had when I was learning because when I was learning, I was kind of doing this right here, looking at it and being like, oh, I'm behind, oh, I'm ahead, oh, I'm behind, oh, I'm ahead. And that was kind of how I trained my ear, which is also the reason why you catch me a lot of times looking over because it's just natural habit. But with this controller having the lights, you're actually already looking at the controller, you're looking at the jaw wheel as you're pushing it forward, pushing it backwards because the lights are telling you which way to go. So I feel like that actually would help you a lot more being a little bit more visual instead of looking over here and using muscle memory to tell you where to go with it. You're actually looking at it. It's telling you which way to push it. So that might sound weird. That's just my theory on it. But uh, I think that would help me personally a lot more than the way I learned it. Anyways guys, that's a quick beginner demo on beat matching. Once again, I'd like to give a big shout out to my friends over at Hercules for sponsoring this video. If you'd like to check out the Hercules DJ controller, Impulse 300 is linked down in the description down below to where you can purchase it on Amazon. With that said, if you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. If you're not already subscribed to this YouTube channel, you're gonna miss out on the new tutorials that are coming. Be sure to click that subscribe button. <laughs> And like always, guys, my name is DJ Rick Webb. Keep them records spinning, and I will see you guys next time. Peace. Ow.